my name is Ellen and today I'm going to be showing you guys some tips and tricks on how to practice bar chords on your guitar. So stay tuned if this is something that you're interested in learning. So let's go ahead and start off by discussing what a bar chord is. So pretty much a bar chord is anything that requires you to take your index finger and bar all five or all six of your guitar strings. So um, for example, F is a very common bar chord that you'll see a lot. And you'll see when I'm playing F, what I'm doing is I'm taking my index finger and laying it across all six strings at once, kind of like what a capo would be doing if you were playing with a capo. Another common one would be um, B minor. Okay? Now that sounds easy enough, but it can actually be a pretty difficult skill to master, especially if you are a beginner. So I'm going to go ahead and take you guys through some of these tips and tricks that I've come up with, and um, hopefully it'll help you with practicing your bar chords. So let's go ahead and start off with discussing the position that your body is in when you're trying to play these bar chords. I've noticed a lot that if you change your position, it can actually drastically change the way that your bar chords sound. So let's go ahead and start off with talking about the index finger, which is the one you'll be using to bar all your chords. If you look at your finger, the one that is closest to your other four fingers, you'll see that this side of your finger is kind of, I guess, flabby, a little bit more skin here, so we don't want to use this side of our finger to bar a chord. If you go to the other side, you'll notice that it's a lot harder, there's more like of a bony type side there. The reason we care about this is because this side of your finger is going to be a lot more effective when holding down all the strings, because the bony side is going to do a heck of a lot better job holding down all the strings than the more flabby side. So the first thing I have to tell you is whenever you're playing a bar chord, instead of laying your finger straight across all of the strings like this, which I see a lot of people doing, you might want to go ahead and try to turn your finger just a little to the side so that it's a little bit more on the bony side. The next finger I want to talk about is your thumb. A lot of people don't think about this, but when you're barring your chord, a lot of the pressure comes from how much you're pressing down with your thumb on the other side of your guitar neck. So whenever you're playing a barred chord, for instance F, one thing that you want to do besides looking at your index finger and turning it to the side a little is also to be aware of how much pressure you're putting on your thumb on the other side of the guitar. You want to have the right amount of pressure on your thumb so that you're pushing against the guitar neck in one direction and your index finger is pushing in the opposite direction. That way you have a little bit of a pinching action going on so that you can bar all your strings and you don't have to worry about a buzzing sound. Now this kind of goes hand in hand with what I said earlier about your index finger, but um, one thing you want to do is be aware of where your wrist is. If your wrist is up here towards your guitar neck, it's going to be so super hard to bar those chords. And your finger, there's just no way that you can kind of turn it to the side that you need it to be on to effectively bar your chords. So one thing that can be a really quick fix is to take your wrist and just kind of bend it outwards. By bending it outwards, you're giving your fingers a lot more flexibility and now you can take your index finger and roll it on its side. And when you roll it on its side, you'll see that your wrist kind of already makes this shape. So I'm just reiterating the wrist shape because it's really important also. And of course, going along with your fingers and your wrist would be your elbow. So if you keep your elbow far away from you and you're trying to play barred chords, again, what this is going to do is it's going to make your, it's going to force your index finger to play flat. And what you want is to play at an angle on the side of your finger. So you'll notice that when I play like this versus when I roll my index finger to the side I want, my elbow automatically comes in towards my body. And you want that. That's good. So whenever you're playing bar chords, you're going to notice that your elbow is going to be closer to your body, your wrist is going to be further away from the guitar neck, and your index finger is going to be turned a little bit to the bony side. Okay? The main idea of practicing bar chords with the right positioning is to develop the right muscles in your hand and in your forearm. Because I know a lot of beginners start to get frustrated because your hand starts hurting and you think that you're maybe just doing it wrong. But a lot of the time it just may be that your hand and your forearm are not used to the amount of pressure that you're putting on it. So when you practice this correct positioning when playing bar chords, it'll really help your muscles develop the right way and it'll help them get the feel of what it's supposed to feel like when you're playing a bar chord. Now another thing that kind of goes along with positioning that I've gone ahead and listed here is the development of a callus. So when you start playing a lot more barred chords, you're going to notice that the skin on this side of your finger is going to get a lot rougher. And that's perfect because it's just like when you're playing a regular chord and you want the tips of your fingers to get a little bit of a callus, it's great for your first finger or your index finger to develop a callus as well. That way you can start 
-hmm. doing some sliding action and it'll hurt less the more you practice because your skin is just going to develop a little bit harder and that'll be so great so that you don't feel as much pain whenever you play guitar. And the last thing I have to tell you as far as positioning goes is if you really feel like you can't play these bar chords, one thing that you can do to help yourself practice at the beginning is to take your middle finger and kind of use it to lay on top of your first finger to give it a little bit extra pressure so that you can practice barring all six strings at once. And of course, if you're using your middle finger to bar your first finger, it's not gonna, you're not gonna be able to play the F chord or whatever you're playing. But this is just to practice the barring action of your first index finger. The middle finger will just provide a little bit extra pressure and it'll help you to make sure all six strings are barred correctly. Now that we have the positioning down of how we need to position our hands and everything when we're playing barred chords, I'm going to go ahead and move on to a bit of skill learning. Okay, so once you understand the positioning of how you're supposed to be playing your barred chords, you can go ahead and move on to skill learning. So skill learning is kind of just like a daily practicing of your bar chords. So this is just some advice that I've kind of gathered over the years from personal experience and also have read about a little bit on guitar. So let's go ahead and start with some of these basic rules of practicing. Because of the way that the guitar is strung, it's actually going to be easier for you to practice bar chords higher on the neck. So more towards the body of the guitar. If you practice your F chord down here, it'll be a little bit harder because it requires a little bit more muscle to hold down all the six strings at the bottom. If you go up to maybe like your seventh fret or something, it should be a little bit easier because there's less pressure. So whenever you're practicing your bar chords, definitely try and start higher on the neck of the guitar or more towards the body of the guitar when you're practicing positioning and things like that. And then you can make your way down towards the bottom of the neck. And it should be easier for you to play at the bottom after you've practiced it at the top. Another piece of advice that I have is that when you're playing a bar chord, you should play each individual note by playing each individual string. Because a lot of us have different hand shapes and finger shapes and we just play things differently, you're going to notice that if there's a buzzing sound at all, it's probably caused by just one string. And so um, depending on how you're barring your strings down, it could be a different string for every person. So for instance, when I put down my F chord, I want to play through every string individually. So you'll notice that the only buzzing we heard was at the low E string. So that means my finger is not providing enough pressure up here at the top. So I'm going to try to fix that and then practice it again. So now an exercise you can use to practice your bar chords would be to start higher on the neck. So I'm going to go ahead and start on the 9th fret here. I'm going to put my F chord shape down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to practice with a metronome playing this just with a very simple strumming or maybe even just strumming it one time every measure. So now that I have my metronome going, I'm just going to go ahead and put on one of my bar chords. Let's go ahead and put on B minor. And what I'm going to do is do a simple strumming pattern for each measure. And then after one measure, I'm going to move down one fret at a time. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean by that. to develop a callus so that you get used to kind of sliding around on the guitar and it's also going to help you with rhythm because whenever you play a song you do want to stay in rhythm and you have to learn how to go from a non barred chord to a barred chord so when you do this kind of exercise it'll really help with that now when you practice songs a lot of times you're gonna to have to know how to go from a non barred chord straight to your barred chord so a good way to practice that is to use your metronome again and to take the chord that you want to practice such as F in this case, and what you're going to do is turn on the metronome and then you're going to play your bar chord and then take your hand completely off and then the next measure put it back on and play it again. If you practice continuously taking off your hand between measures, it kind of forces you to get to that bar chord a little bit quicker, which is going to come in handy when you're doing a song and you need to transition really fast. So I'll go ahead and show you what I mean by this example. So as you can see, as the metronome was going, I was playing the string and then taking my hand completely away from the position. 
It's one thing to practice your bar chord over and over without moving your hand once you get it, but to be realistic when you start playing songs that are not all bar chords, you're gonna have to go from, let's say, a G to an F, where you have to know how to transition to that bar chord immediately. So by practicing by taking your hand off and then putting it back on, we're just concentrating on getting our fingers back to that same position without any buzzing or anything like that. Remember as you go through these exercises that it's all about the balance of the pressure that you're putting between your fingers and your thumb and the pressure that you're using with your muscles in your forearm and your hand. You don't want to put on too much pressure and like really squeeze the neck of your guitar because all that's going to do is tire out your hand muscles and it's just going to make you very frustrated. So I don't know exactly how to explain this, it's just something that you got to mess around with. You got to find the right amount of pressure between making sure that the strings don't buzz but also making sure you're not like crowding around your guitar and like pushing really hard down on it because it's not the harder you push the less likely it'll stop buzzing. It's actually just finding the right amount of pressure. If you push super, super hard, all that's gonna do is cramp up your hand. Going along with the cramping up of your hand, um, pain is normal when you're practicing barred chords, especially if you don't have calluses, you're a beginner, and you're just not used to the type of feel that this is creating. So um, if your hand starts to cramp up and everything and you're starting to get really frustrated, it's always okay to take a break. You obviously, you have to make sure that you're practicing using the right muscles and getting those barred chords down, but if it starts to become really painful and you're just getting frustrated, just take a break. Walk away, do something else, and then come back to it the next day or maybe just a couple hours later or however long you need to recover your hand. And one last piece of advice I have that kind of goes along with skill learning is if you really cannot do a chord such as F, it's just impossible for you to play, remember that there are always um, alternative fingerings that you can use. For example, this also is F, but you don't really have to bar any chords. So if you really can't play a barred chord, go online and look up and see if there's any sort of alternate fingering, because I'm sure there's alternate fingerings for most barred chords. So. Um, just a piece of advice to keep in mind. All right, now the last category I have is if you're learning how to play barred chords on a song by song basis. This is actually how I learned to play barred chords just because I taught myself guitar and I would just learn one song after the other. And whenever an F chord or a B minor chord came up, I had to just kind of learn how to do it. So if that's your kind of strategy too, then here's some tips I have for song by song learning. First of all, you want to be aware of what song you're trying to play. Um, finding a song that only has maybe one barred chord throughout the entire thing, that would be your best bet. You want to go for easier songs that maybe only have one F chord or one B minor chord in it instead of a song that transitions between many, many different barred chords because that might overwhelm you and then you might get really frustrated and just give up. So, for example, if you had this kind of chord progression, which is very common in a lot of songs, you'll notice that the only barred chord you have is the B minor. All other three chords are normal chords or casual chords where you don't have to worry about barring anything. So by choosing a song that has a pattern similar to this and it only has one barred chord and where you know all the other chords that you're playing, you can kind of make those barred chords your goal. So when you're practicing, you can kind of concentrate every time you know a barred chord's coming around. Another thing this will do is it'll really build your confidence so that you can play most of the song and just really concentrate whenever you have to play a barred chord. This is the way I personally learned how to play barred chords because I would oftentimes come across a song where there was just one barred chord in the whole song for just the chorus or something. And so I would play the entire song and then when it got to that part I would get a little bit stuck. But if you practice just that one chord that you need over and over again in the context of your song, then it should be a confidence booster because once you master one barred chord, it'll be a lot easier to master all the other ones out there. So this kind of goes back to skill learning, but like I said earlier, one of the most important things about playing barred chords is just kind of memorizing the shape and the feel of your hand and the amount of pressure that you're using and everything. So keep that in mind when you practice through a song that you're trying to play. So now let's go ahead and use B minor as our bar chord that we're trying to practice and use this chord progression. The way I would practice this is again, use your metronome. Your metronome is gonna be your friend throughout this process. And what you wanna do is practice that bar chord by itself alone, just like we did earlier. Once your hand is used to 
to the feel and the pressure and the shape and everything of the chord that is in your song, in this case, B minor, then we can go ahead and move on to the next step. So the next step is to go from the barred chord that you're gonna play into the next chord that comes after it. So in this case, after B minor, we have A. So what we're gonna do is turn the metronome back on and we're gonna practice going, switching from B minor to A and then switching back and forth, back and forth until we kind of get the hang of it. So I'll go ahead and show you an example. Once you're used to going from the bar chord that you're trying to make your goal into the chord after it, and you can transition pretty quickly and pretty easily between those two, we're going to go one step further and now we're going to add in the chord that comes before the bar chord. So in this case that would be G. So now what we're going to do is turn the metronome back on and we're going to practice kind of like a triangle. You're going to play the chord before the bar chord, then the bar chord, then the chord after the bar chord. So in this case G to B minor to A. And we're gonna turn on the metronome and just play it in rounds. Okay, so I'll go ahead and show you an example of that. order is so that we can kind of get used to transitioning before and after the bar chord because of course the bar chord is where we're going to have the most difficulty if you're a beginner and that's what you're afraid of. So by practicing all these chords that surround the bar chord we're building up our confidence and we're getting used to getting there so that when we're actually playing through the entire chord progression and the entire song you don't freak out before the bar chord gets there because you know you can do it. So now, once you've gotten the chord before and after, as well as the bar chord itself, you should be able to play an entire chord progression. You won't have to worry so much about it. chords on a song by song basis, the only thing you have to do after this is just speed it up. So practice with your metronome and eventually you should be able to get the right rhythm at the right speed and tempo without stopping and having to worry about the bar chord. So those are just some tips and tricks I have for you to practice your bar chords. I know that it's very difficult, especially if you're a beginner, but I promise you if you take into consideration some of the things I've said here today and you practice every day until you feel a little more confident each day, I promise before you know it you'll be able to play all the songs with all the bar chords and you won't even have to worry about it. Your hand will be all muscular, you'll be ready to do it, you'll know what each individual bar chord is supposed to feel like with the pressure and everything and you'll just practice through an entire song and you'll be able to blow through all the songs with all the bar chords in it. I promise. You just got to keep on trucking through it and practicing. So thanks so much for watching my TMT. I hope that this helped you and um, if it did make sure to subscribe below for more TMTs in the future where I show you techniques on how to improve upon your guitar playing. So um, until next time my name is Ellen and I'll see you guys later. Bye!